In this video, I interview chef and restaurateur Hugh Aikson in honor of Hunger Action Month. So I just asked him a few questions about his involvement with No Kid Hungry, as well as um, questions in reference to him being a chef and a restaurateur. Okay, well, let's do it. Okay, well, my first question is, how did you first get involved with No Kid Hungry? I've done a couple of events over the years, but I really got invited to the, the last DC conference last year that was really eye-opening to me of what the organization's done over the years and just the impact that they have. So I've always tried to be very much of a advocate for bettering of the situation of kids in America, but also just as, how we eat overall. But No Kid Hungry just has immediate impact on those really who need most of our help because they have often little say in, you know, affecting change and making things better for themselves because they're kids. And so to me, that it's just a, it's a no brainer that we, uh, that we try and support groups like No Kid Hungry and Share Strength that are really just doing awesome work and getting, getting real results. Yeah, definitely. I really love the the cause of No Kid Hungry and what they're trying to do um, for kids who are hungry in America. So um, my next question is, what inspired you to become a chef and also um, later a restaurateur? Um, you know, when I was young in school, I come from a very academic family, and I wouldn't say I was a uh, star academic kid. So I worked in restaurants, and I worked in restaurants from 14 years old on, and it was just, it ended up being my passion and something that uh, I can wake up every day with food and beverage and be totally inspired to learn more. So it's kind of an endless topic. And so that's, uh, you know, it ends up being an awesome career choice when something is endlessly fascinating to you. And so that's why I became a chef, and that's why I continue to become a restaurateur and do that and try and affect change and feed community. And uh, and then as an ancillary to that is being a advocate for change in America and realizing that we can make progress every day. And if we make progress, then we, the next generation is in better shape. Okay. Um, my next question is, I know your latest cookbook is The Bod Fork. It's a, a seasonal cookbook, um, and I just wanted to know, what are some of your favorite and seasonal um, fruits and vegetables right now? Well, I mean, right now we're in apple season, and we're in winter squash season, and a lot of brassicas and greens and things like that. So, to me, I'm kind of a big fan of the unheralded, so I love the radicchios and chorizos and endives and uh, different bitter greens uh, that are so good. So to me, I think you just want to find what's in season around you and learn how to cook it. And I think then you make a better meal for yourself. Absolutely. That's what my um, family is about. Uh, we like shopping in season for our produce. So we're all about trying to find out with um, in our area, what's in season, and just that's just how we do our grocery shopping. That's a good way of doing it. <laughs> um, my next question is: Name a kitchen utensil that you couldn't live without, and also name a food item that you think you couldn't live without. Let's see. Food, I well, I guess utensil, probably a bench scraper. Just a simple pastry tool that's for scraping away flour and things like that. It just makes cleaning up really easy when you're working on a cutting board because you can scoop up all the prep you've done and put it in the bowl or in the pan that you're working on. It just it aids in keeping your uh, your work surface really clean and well laid out, maintained. So whenever I'm working on a cutting board, there's one right there for me to use. Then ingredient was I have a really hard time living without butter. I love butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything in moderation, but butter's a really good thing. That's funny. Um, and my next question is, if somebody told you to come up with a dish that basically represents um, kind of what No Kid Hungry is about, 
what ingredients would you choose and why? You know, I think what No Kid Hungry is about is, is getting kids to eat great food. And, and uh, But I think it, it, economically, we always have to be smart about things. So to me, I think we teach kids how to make a great salad. And we use a lot of carrots and cucumbers and radishes and lettuces that are all really inexpensive and available everywhere across the country. And then making a really simple vinaigrette, which is just a matter of a ratio and uh, those, those become retainable life skills that nobody's ever going to forget. You know, I think the world would be a lot better place if every kid in America knows how to make a vinaigrette from scratch that's four ingredients and tastes great and keeps them away from buying something that's preservative laden and uh, just on the shelf. Yeah, absolutely. I I also agree with um, the salad being a core dish of knowing how to make, and I and I love. Uh, that's like one of my favorite things is having salad. So when you're naming like carrots and cucumbers, it's like, ooh, those are my favorite items for uh, salad. So. Yeah, and easy, and everybody's got them. Now I'm going to ask, what would you rather, fruits or vegetables? Uh, vegetables. Um, rice pasta. Uh, rice. Um, fish or meat? Mm, meat. <laughs> um, pies or cakes? Uh, pies. Okay. Um, coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> I was about to wrap this up. I didn't have too many questions for you just because I know that you're very busy. And so I just kind of wanted to just ask you just a few questions. And so my last question for you is kind of um, what's next for you? What do you have upcoming for you? Well, I mean, I'm working on my four restaurants always because they're like raising children. They just always need a lot of work. And then uh, I'm working on a revamping of home economics curriculum in my county that's meant to be In the end, a curriculum that can be used by any public school in the United States free of charge. And so we're very into that, and that's called seedlifeskills.org is the address on the web. And so that's what we're working on these days. And not much else. I mean, we've got some other business plans that we're working on, but uh, the priorities are uh, things in existence right now and are – uh, our foundation that we started to really uh, teach kids all those retainable life skills that they, we, we think they need. I'd like to thank Mr. Hugh Aikson for doing this interview with me. And I just want to let you all know that there's still time left to dine out for No Kid Hungry this September. All you have to do is text DINE to 877-877 or you can check out NoKidHungry.org to find a restaurant near you.